Hello friends, in this series we are going to talk about a very special technique to break kidney stones without any surgery. And this technique uses sound waves to focus on the stones and then breaks them into pieces. And these pieces then subsequently they come out through the normal passage of urine through the pipes called the ureters. Uh, this technique is called the shockwave lithotripsy or ESWL as we call it and commonly it is known as lithotripsy. So this technique has been with us for the last 30 years so we have a lot of experience with this treatment modality. Compared to surgery, lithotripsy is a much safer option because there is no anesthesia, there is hardly any pain and there is no hospital stay also. So uh, compared to a surgery such as a laser surgery or a retrograde intrarenal surgery where we have a lot of other complications also, lithotripsy is a very very safe option. So I usually suggest lithotripsy for patients in the first sitting as the first treatment of choice, especially those who do not want any surgery. And let's talk about the lithotripsy in more details. Let's take up some of the questions that you guys have asked us about lithotripsy. So the first question that our uh, audience has asked us is what is lithotripsy? So I have given an answer to this already. Lithotripsy is basically a technique in which we use sound waves which are focused onto the stone with the help of a CM, which is a live x-ray or with the help of an ultrasound. Now these sound waves they are given multiple times so every session we give about 2500 to 3000 sound waves and these sound waves or shock waves they cause breaking of the stones by moving the stones a little bit and by creating space within the stones. Once the space is created these stones and the pieces then subsequently travel down the urinary passage called the ureter and they come out of the body. The other question that has been asked on lithotripsy is how long does it take to clear the stones? So normally uh, we suggest about three to four sessions of lithotripsy for breaking the stones. These sessions are about 40 minutes each and they are given uh, at an interval of one week. So we call the patient on a fixed day every week and we get an x-ray to see how the stone has broken and then we subject the patient to further lithotripsy if there are still remnant stones remaining. So on an average if we talk about soft stones uh, usually they are cleared in one to two sittings but if we take into consideration the hard stones then they would take as many as four to five sittings also. So that totally depends on the strength of the stone or the hardness of the stone. Another question that has been asked is what are the success rates of lithotripsy? So uh, we have to understand that this is a process in which we focus sound waves on the stone. So our job as a surgeon is only to focus the sound waves rightly on the stone in all the axis. Once that is done then it is left up to the machine and uh, also depends on the nature of the stone as to what the success would be. So typically for soft stones which are uh, which do not have a lot of calcium in them those stones usually break uh, in one or two sittings and the success rate is more than 90 percent for the stones which are in the kidney and the upper ureter. For the stones which are down below in the lower ureter the success rates reduce a little bit to as high as about 80 to 85 percent. Now if the stone is very hard then the success rates may be as low as 75 to 80 percent but usually we do assess the hardness of the stone before giving the option of lithotripsy to the patient. So there is a question on lithotripsy as to what are the complications of lithotripsy. So what are the problems which can arise if we do lithotripsy. So lithotripsy as we have talked about it breaks the stone into very small pieces. Usually they are in the form of a dust or powder but sometimes it can break the stone into bigger pieces also. Now if these pieces try to come out through the narrow urine pipe called the ureter then sometimes what happens is that these stones get stuck in the pipe and they can lead to some acute colic or pain which requires the patient to come to the emergency and get an injection for painkillers and uh, that's quite effective to reduce the pain. But sometimes these stone pieces do not move further and they require either a stenting or a laser surgery which is again a scarless procedure to remove these stones from the urinary pipe. 
So this is one of the major problems that can happen with lithotripsy if the pieces do not break in a very fine way. The second thing that can happen is that sometimes there can be bleeding after the lithotripsy which means that the urine will come red. Normally it is quite normal to have the urine red after lithotripsy but if it persists for a longer period of time then you have to consult the doctor back and usually we give some medicines to treat it. The third thing which commonly happens is infection and the fourth thing which can happen is uh, some sort of a dull ache which continues despite you know, uh, the session being over. So you may have pain for a prolonged period of time, maybe a day or two in some cases. Then we have to talk about the long term side effects. So if we talk about what happens after many years after lithotripsy, then there are certain studies which say that patients can have hypertension, which is BP problem, or they can have pancreatic inflammation. But then again, these studies are not well proven. There is just an association because sometimes it can just happen in due course of time also. So, we so moving on ahead in the series, we have a very important question. Which stones we can treat with lithotripsy? Can we treat all the stones with lithotripsy? So that's a very good question because we cannot treat all the stones with lithotripsy. Usually lithotripsy is recommended in stones which are in the kidney or the upper ureter and they are bet between 1 to 2 centimeter in size. If the stones are very big, then we have to usually put a stent and do lithotripsy because in these cases the pieces which break are very big and they can get stuck in the pipe. So if the stone size is more than 2 centimeters, we advise the patient to get a stent placed first, a DJ stent and then we proceed for lithotripsy. But usually we avoid lithotripsy altogether in stones which are more than 25 mm in size or 2.5 centimeters in size. Apart from that, even if the stones are lower down in the ureter, uh, then also we usually prefer a laser surgery which is a scarless surgery called urethrorenoscopy over lithotripsy but it can definitely be offered to these patients as well and uh, the effectiveness of treatment of lithotripsy in such patients where the stone is down in the pipe is usually 5 to 10 percent less than the original success rate of lithotripsy. Yes. What happens when I go for lithotripsy? So usually the routine is that in the morning we get a fresh x-ray of your KUB region which is the abdomen to see what is the location of the stone and what is the latest situation of your bowel gases. So it is important that you know, there shouldn't be much gas in the abdomen before we take you for the lithotripsy. So normally we give you some tablets which you can take and come to reduce the gas in the abdomen. Now once you are there in the hospital usually we would review uh, you in the OPD, we will see the x-ray and then we will post you for the lithotripsy. Uh, so in that case, we, you will have to first sign a consent form which mentions all the problems, risks, complications, the success rate of lithotripsy. You have to sign it so that you agree to it and then we give you a room in which you have to change into the patient clothes. Then uh, a staff will assist you and escort you to the lithotripsy suite where you will be made to lie on a table. Uh, and then a lithotripsy head which is a balloon filled with water is connected to the uh, lumbar region which is the region of the kidney and under a live x-ray using the fluoroscopy we would focus on the stone and then we would start the process. So initially when the first shock wave is given there is a sound which startles the patient so we give you earmuffs to uh, you know reduce the noise and then subsequently uh, we start with a low intensity of the sound energy and we slowly slowly increase the intensity of the sound energy and we give this uh, for about 40 minutes usually in that 2500 to 3000 shock waves are given. After that uh, we remove the x-ray and then you are made to sit and then you shift it back to the room. Then you have to drink a few glasses of water so that you can pass urine. Once you have passed urine then you are free to go back home and we give you some painkillers and some antibiotics to make sure that you don't get an infection and you don't have pain. Uh, with this you can do all your activities as in you can do running, jumping, skipping, everything is allowed after lithotripsy. There is usually no bed rest that we advise. We rather encourage the patient to be active so that the pieces can move down and come out through the urine. 
Apart from that, we have to then schedule a follow-up visit after seven days. Again, there we do the same process. We get an X-ray and then we review in the OPD and then we again do a session of lithotripsy.